Last time on Sailing on a Whim. After spending the summer racing, we finally do our offshore course up on Lake Superior and get a real taste of what it would be like to cruise. But coming up, we head to Florida to look at a boat. Stay tuned. ready for our boat hunt the first boat to look at and we already put an offer on it so we are going to look at a tartan 37 tomorrow in florida flying down on an airplane yeah we're gonna take an airplane to go look at a sailboat <clears throat> First thing we do, we stop and get a couple of Cuban sandwiches. Yeah. Hopefully, be unless you've been sailing your whole life, buying a sailboat for the first time can be a daunting task. We really focused on the three main resources for, for buying sailboats in the United States, which is Yacht World, Sailboat Listings, and Craigslist. Those are the three that we really focused on, and I spent at least two or three hours a day for the first seven months reading about sailboats. For our first boat, we had set our budget at around $30,000 with a few extra thousand to make improvements to the boat. One resource that I really got into was bluewaterboats.org because in our budget, you really want to know that you're buying a quality boat. And the boats on that website are all true, time-tested blue water sailboats that are meant for cruising oceans. And many of the boats also fell right into our budget. Heading on the boat, first time we're gonna see it with our Cuban sandwiches. We ended up sort of in this little island off Venezuela. It was windy and it was a So over a couple Cuban sandwiches, we started to get to know James, the current owner. He had bought the boat 10 years prior with four other partners and had taken very good care of the boat and really loved it. What we've heard a great saying in sailing is that you don't buy a boat, you buy the owner. And we found that to be very true. If you're buying a boat from an owner who cares about their boat and they care about you buying their boat, it's gonna make the whole process just that much easier. Some people just do the Gerards. <laughs> Have you had any issues? James wasted no time in giving us a very thorough tour of the boat, and he also offered to let us stay on the boat the few days we were in Florida, which I thought was a fantastic gesture that we took him up on, because we really wanted to see how the boat felt staying on it for a few days while we were there. So, first impressions. I wanted to walk away and get a little quick, get our thoughts done. He's obviously taking good care of it. He's He likes that boat. Those are things that are important. You know, the survey is going to really, it's going to be interesting to find out the survey comes up, because... I mean, I think that's where we're going to find anything that he's not going to mention. Actually being on the boat, it feels really good. I, I so, after the tour, we packed up our stuff and James offered to take us out for a little spin. I think you need a witch head of fucker right there. 
here as we're doing channels. The one thing that we, I, I, the one that I have is chloride. That's awesome. The Aussie just had to come save the day. Next morning we got up bright and early and headed off to get our survey done. Well, like a nice day for sale. Yeah. Should we get up? You just keep going. Right. I think you could say we took it as a very good omen that on our way to our survey, we ran into a pot of dolphins that follow us for over half an hour. And I gotta tell you, it will never ever get old. And just like that, along with every good omen, comes the bad omen. On our way through the channel to get the boat hauled out, we ran aground. channel and these guys were nice enough to come out and uh, help us. They tied a rope to the mangrove and pulled us off. Um, that was really nice of them. And uh, so our skipper's really getting uh, waves put to him to sell this boat. Guy came over nice enough, he put paddled out in his kayak and still stuck. Still stuck? So we did finally get off the sand and made it to our survey on time. Buddy mine, Mark, came along for a red. Take a couple days to get us a report. Yeah, what I'll do, yeah, and uh, and the way I you know work, is I get day to day, like today when I'm doing. It. Yep, yep, yep. And when I will leave, and then I'll have the report for you in two business days. Okay. Okay. So yep. this this Friday, I'll have it for you sometime Tuesday. Okay. 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 Because I'm. I already got a couple ahead of you that I got to do this weekend, so I'm like... features of the Tartan 37 is it has a centerboard and this particular boat the centerboard was stuck up and so one of the keys to my buying the boat was that their owner fixed the centerboard and made sure that it was coming down okay and so I helped him get all the dirt out and to make it sure that it was working properly. So what did you do with the rudder? So you just broke it. So it broke. You see, you see how they make this? Like there's like a whole internal skeleton thing. Like a, 
So after the on land part of the survey was done, we took it out for a short sea trial. This is the moment that we have kind of decided is going to be, this is going to be our boat, it sounds like. Unless something major happens in the next 24 hours or something, um, we'll be buying uh, Wim, the Tartan 37. And we'll probably talk a little bit more later, but um, you know, we're going to do a little shout out to James. If you're watching this, James, um, you've been very helpful and we've really enjoyed getting to know you. And uh, thank you for selling us a decent boat. Um, we won't be probably see this for a couple months, but you're a good dude. And uh, I don't think we could have picked a better owner to buy a boat from. Okay. You guys are pros by now. <laughs> yeah. What was that? It's actually crashing the boat. We, uh, we ran aground, we busted the auto autopilot. And this is all, all on the first day. All on day one. We ran aground three times. Three times. Yeah. Had to be pulled by a kayak. Yeah, pulled by a kayak. Well, it was getting kind of late, so we decided to stop at the Naples City Dock for the night to do a little bit of celebrating because we were happy we were about to buy a boat. So, first one. Cheers. Well, we have, to, we have to do this. And of course, a little celebrating turned to a lot of celebrating. No, the Lord Gordon <laughs> and the Lady Shelley. He is a Lord, and I now I am a Lady. And yep, he was a real, actual Lord. So we're at the we're at the boat, and it is a beautiful night. And we just got lucky enough, or we have we got uh, we booked a slip uh, here at the Naples City Dock, and we just ended up being here the weekend that they are doing their their uh, Christmas boat parade. So uh, we're gonna get some footage of that. Next morning on the way back, we ran into another pot of dolphins. It just was shaping up to be such a great trip. Oh, so, okay, we're about to get into the boat here. Um, we leave tomorrow, but we're gonna uh, take all the cushions up, look in all the nooks and crannies, see if we can find anything, and just get an idea of where things are at. Um, one thing that you know, as you get into it, the first couple days being on the boat, great, super fun. Um, and then, you know, we have to start thinking about, uh, <laughs> then you have to start really ide uh, identifying all the maintenance that is going to have to be done on the boat on a regular basis. And I tell you, it really, like, all of a sudden, phew, like, it gets to be an overwhelming, um, it gets to be overwhelming because there's just so many systems on a, on a, even on a small boat, there's a lot to learn. Um, and when you don't really have a mechanical background or maintenance background, um, all of a sudden you're just faced with this, you know, like if something goes wrong, what are we going to do? Um, so that's a little daunting. Um, and you know, you, you know, that's going to come, but then it hits you and you know, you just have to kind of deal with it. So, you know, we're just going to start kind of taking bits by bits apart and, 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 and checking out the boat. But uh, yeah, it's, it gets to be intense when you think about all the stuff that needs to happen on a boat. Here we go. Well, it's the 
Last day of our trip here, checking out the boat. So we're about to head to the airport. We're gonna get a little breakfast and then head out. <clears throat> but, um, you know, to, we'll do a little re another little recap of the whole experience, but I will say, you know, there's a lot of roller coasters in emotion when it ha comes to this kind of life change. <clears throat> The big things were the excitement that you feel when you decide you're going to do something like this. And then, you know, as you go through, you know, the, the year that we've been planning and saving, that's all awesome and fun and learning. And then you get here, you check out the boat. Um, and the range of emotion that I went through personally was that all of a sudden you're kind of like, <clears throat> I'm right in the middle of the road here. You're kind of like, Wait, what the F am I doing? Uh, I don't know how to sail. I don't know how to fix anything. Uh, I'm not that handy of a guy. So all those things, and as the owner, the current owner of the boat starts to explain the systems, like all of a sudden, I was like, there really was that moment where you really have to like, okay, holy sh, you know, what are we doing? Um, and then got a good night's sleep came back the next day and started just to, to go through the systems in the boat, I think that really helped. Just really starting to identify where things are at. If something goes wrong, what are we going to do? Um, where the valves are, where the through holes are, all that stuff. So <clears throat> after that happened, then then all of a sudden it starts to become a little more manageable because you understand where things are at. And, um, but I mean, it's still just what a learning curve. It's going to take, you know, a month to get to know the boat pretty well. Um, and it'll take a long time just to just to <clears throat> kind of get an idea of what we're doing. And, um, but still, I, now I'm feeling a lot better and excited to get back to start working on the boat for sure. Next time on Sailing on a Whim, you get to follow along and see a little glimpse into what we do for a living before we head back to Florida to buy the boat. Clear check. And yep, we run aground again.